teams, 20 drivers, billions of dollars at stake. For 70 years, the world has watched Formula One to see who will be the best of the best. The world champion, the driver whose name and nationality will go down in history. Drivers from 40 countries have raced in Formula One, but over half of the champions come from just four countries. And they might not be the first four that come to mind. So which ones are they? Why do these countries make champions? And how does a country with a population the size of South Carolina have one of the greatest championship records in international motorsports? Well, you gotta stick around to find out. This is Wheelhouse. Formula One is a truly international series. Since it began in 1950, there have been teams from 26 countries, races held in 33 countries, and 767 drivers from 40 different countries. But among all those drivers, there have only been 33 world champions. So where do champions come from? Do most champions just come from the countries that produce the most drivers? Well, let's look there first. Roughly 65% of all F1 drivers come from just four countries, Italy, the US, France, and the United Kingdom. It's not much of a mystery why those four countries have produced so many F1 competitors. Take Italy. It's the home of Ferrari, a team which has never missed a Formula One season and has won the Constructors' Championship a record 15 times. It's the home of legendary F1 circuits like Monza, Imola, and Mugello. Nearly 100 F1 drivers have been Italian. So how many Italian champions are there? <laughs> Just two and there hasn't been an Italian champion since 1953. Wait a minute, I hear you F1 fans crying. What about the 1978 world champion Mario Andretti? He was Italian, he was. But sometimes the record book doesn't tell the whole story. So we've got to dig a little deeper. Andretti was born in Italy, but raced as an American. So what does that mean? How did Andretti end up racing with the Stars and Stripes. Nationality in Formula One is whatever's listed on a driver's FIA super license. That's the most elite license in racing, and at any given time, there are less than 100 drivers in the world who could even qualify for it. Andretti became a US citizen in 1964, and dual citizens like Andretti can choose which country they represent. Because Andretti spent most of his career in the USA, he continued racing as an American when he got his super license. Sorry, Italy. Now, before you wear yourself out chanting USA, USA, I have some bad news. Out of the 158 American F1 drivers, only two became world champions. But again, the record book doesn't tell the whole story. We've got to dig into the history. From 1950 to 1960, the Indianapolis 500 was a Formula One championship event. But 122 of the Americans who raced at Indy during those years never entered another F1 championship race. Once you know that, America's F1 record starts to look Pretty good, actually. Just 36 Americans have actually competed for the championship. That means we've got one champion for every 18 drivers, a ratio that's not far off from some of the top countries for champions. Not too shabby, especially considering that France, home of Le Mans and the FIA, has had 71 drivers, but just one world champion. All right, so now you can chant a little if you want. Sorry, France. So far, we know that three of the top countries for Formula One drivers, Italy, the USA, and France, have produced just five world champions between them. So where do these champions come from? Well, the top spot for both drivers and champions goes to the United Kingdom. Over 70 seasons of Formula One, there have been 164 British drivers. And among the 33 world champions, 10 of them were Brits. The top spot for champions isn't even a contest. Second place is a fight for the scraps, a three-way tie between the countries with just three champions each. One of the most successful countries is the size of New Mexico, but with the climate of Alaska. It's not an obvious choice for champion country if you ask me, but they really make it work. But before we find out which country that is, let's see why British drivers have been so successful in Formula One. Much like the Italians, the British have been massively involved in Formula One from the start. There has never been a season without a British team, a British driver, or a British Grand Prix. British F1 teams have won the Constructor Championship twice as many times as the second place Italy. McLaren has participated in every F1 season since 1966, a streak second only to Italy's Ferrari. Three of the 2020 F1 teams were British in McLaren, Williams, and Racing Point more than any other country. And in fact, 
Racing Point is going to be even more British this season, rebranding themselves as the Aston Martin F1 team. Looking forward to seeing how Seb does. What makes the UK in many ways the home of Formula One isn't just about the British teams. Other countries' teams, like Austria's Red Bull and America's Haas, maintain facilities in the UK. Hell, France's Renault F1 cars are designed and built in England. The all-conquering Mercedes team has been based just north of London since their return to F1 in 2010. Basically, Great Britain is to Formula One what North Carolina is to NASCAR. Ferrari might want to argue, but the story of Formula One is dominated by the British. And we haven't even talked about the drivers yet. The list of British F1 champions includes legendary drivers like Nigel Mansell, James Hunt, Jensen Button, and Jackie Stewart. British champions have taken home the title a combined 20 times. Seven of those titles belong to the most successful current driver, Lewis Hamilton, and his career isn't even over yet. <laughs> his career is far from over, I hope. At this point though, with such a commanding lead, another British championship is almost irrelevant. But like the USA, the record book doesn't tell the whole story of Great Britain's F1 success, because you can't tell the story of Lewis Hamilton without talking about Germany. Hamilton won his first championship in 2008 driving a McLaren, but that car had a German engine from Mercedes. With his second championship in 2012, he was now driving for Mercedes and interrupted the four-year championship streak of German driver Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton's next six championships were with Mercedes, the team that has won the Constructors' Championship every year since 2014, and the only year Hamilton didn't win the championship, it went to his Mercedes teammate, German, Nico Rosberg. Hamilton's seventh world championship in 2020 tied the record of yet another German, Michael Schumacher, who still holds the record for most consecutive championships with five in a row. Although perhaps only until next year. That's three, three German champions, which puts Germany in that three-way tie for second place. So why has Germany produced F1 champions? Well, if the story of Formula One is dominated by the British, the story of the car is dominated by Germany. After all, it was the German Karl Benz who invented the automobile in 1885. Along with Mercedes, Germany is the home of Audi, BMW, and Porsche. It's where you'll find the Autobahn in the Nürburgring, where the first German Grand Prix was held in Formula One. It's no surprise then that when Mercedes showed up to their first Formula One season in 1954, they were firing on all cylinders, taking home the Constructors' Championship two years in a row. Admittedly, Mercedes did have a bit of a slump after that, not winning it again until nearly 60 years later in 2014, but they've won it every year since then. The success of the German drivers has been similar to that of Mercedes. A bit of a late start, but boy was it something once they got going. There have been 52 German drivers, but no champions until Michael Schumacher in 1994. The title has come home to Germany 12 times since Schumacher's first championship, more than any other country in the same period. Schumacher went on to win a total of seven titles. Sebastian Vettel got four from 2010 to 2014, and he's still racing, so you never know. We'll see what happens. The third German champion, Nico Rosberg, is the only driver to take a championship away from Hamilton, which is no small feat. Once more, though, the record book isn't giving us the whole story. Like Mario Andretti, Rosberg is also a dual citizen. If his FIA super license listed his other nationality, the top countries for F1 champions would be completely different. Germany wouldn't be second anymore, they'd be tied for fourth. And that mystery country, the happiest country in the world, would be all by itself in second place. But before we reveal the home of Nico Rosberg's dad and possibly the most successful country in international racing, let's take a look at the other country with three Formula One champions. It's a country that couldn't be more different from Germany, and that's Brazil. Brazil doesn't have an Autobahn or a Nürburgring. They don't have Germany's massive car industry, connection to automotive history, or high-performance car culture. But Brazil has the strongest connection to Formula One of any country outside of Europe. And that's partly because Brazilians love sports. Soccer is practically a second religion but also because they love to cheer for Brazilian heroes and see them shine on the world stage. Motorsports in Brazil may not be as accessible as it is in other countries, but all it takes is one rising star and the whole of Brazil is gonna lift them up. Brazil's obsession with Formula One got started when future champion Emerson Fittipaldi scored the first ever Grand Prix victory for a Brazilian in 1970. That began a 47-year streak of 32 Brazilian drivers in Formula One. In 1972, the year Fittipaldi won his first championship, 
the inaugural Brazilian Grand Prix was held, and it has been a part of every F1 season since, except 2020, when it was one of the many races that was sadly canceled due to COVID. I really did miss Interlagos. That race has long been an important event on the F1 calendar, but in Brazil, Formula One is more about national heroes than their home Grand Prix, and one of their biggest Brazilian heroes of all time is Ayrton Senna. Senna was mentored by Fittipaldi and is absolutely one of the biggest legends in Formula One. Along with his three championships, he holds numerous records, including winning the most prestigious Grand Prix of all, Monaco, five years in a row. During his life, Senna achieved near godlike status among the people of Brazil. And following his tragic death at 1994's Grand Prix of Imola, Brazilian interest in Formula One waned. When there are other successful drivers, that interest returns, but F1 has yet to achieve the same popularity it had during the Senna years. Unsurprisingly, really. Many Brazilians believe there could never be a greater driver, and for them, Formula One ended with Senna's death. With their passion for sport, sense of community, and love of international competition, it makes sense that Brazil is on this list. The UK and Germany also make sense because of their close associations with Formula One and enthusiasm for everything automotive. But the last country in this video is probably better known for bands with names like Ensiferum, Omnium Gatherum, Insomnium, all kinds of ums, not race car drivers. For this last one, we've got to dig into the geography, culture, and people to understand why Finland makes racing champions. Some of you might struggle to find Finland on a map. I know I do. So here's how I remember. Finland is the bulbous Scandinavian nation that hangs out behind Europe's dangler. That's Norway and Sweden. And just like the geography suggests, the Finns have a lot of balls. What I'm crudely calling balls, the Finns call sisu. They'll tell you there's no perfect translation for this uniquely Finnish kind of courage. F1 champion Mika Hakkinen said that sisu is what gives Finns the courage to break late get on throttle early, and carve every apex as close as possible. But Sisu also means not letting emotions take control. It's maintaining focus and rational perseverance when the odds are against you. It makes sense that Sisu would be an asset in Formula One. Most drivers in an F1 season will never win a race, but they're still expected to give it their all. Maybe Sisu prepares Finnish drivers to succeed, even when the odds are they're destined to lose. The thing is, Finnish drivers seem to lose less than any other country in Formula One. Sure, they've only got three world champions, but there have only been nine Finns in the whole history of F1. That's insane, quite frankly. No other country even comes close to that rate of success. So, is it all just Sisu? Well, another F1 champion, Kimi Raikkonen, says that all Finns excel at driving because, quote, the roads and long winters, you really have to be a good driver to survive in Finland. It is always slippery and bumpy. Many Finnish roads are gravel, and even the paved ones spend a bunch of the year covered in ice. To get an ordinary driver's license, Finns have to take a test on a slippery road course, which is basically a wet skid pad, and to pass, they have to know how to power slide. This is awesome. Finns even set up elaborate ice circuits on frozen lakes each winter, where anyone can bring any car and take a spin, so to speak. For Finns, it seems, driving at the limit is just driving. Finns will also tell you that driving fast is just in their blood, and maybe they're right. The first ever F1 champion, Keke Rosberg, was the father of German F1 champion, Nico Rosberg. Nico even had a Finnish racing license, switching to a German license just two years before his debut in F1. If Nico hadn't switched, Finland would have four champions and would be all alone in that number two spot. So Finnish racing success is built on harsh winters, sisu, and maybe even a little genetics. Brazil makes F1 champions because they want to beat the world in sport, and often do. Germany because they're possibly the most car-obsessed country in the world, and the UK because they're the spiritual and oftentimes actual home of Formula One. The UK is currently secure in their number one spot for F1 champions, but second place is still a race. If Valtteri Bottas manages to move out from Hamilton's shadow this season, Finland would finally get its fourth champion and be all by itself behind the UK. But for 2021, German Mick Schumacher, Michael Schumacher's son, will be racing in Formula One as well. Brazil's current best hope is Emerson Fittipaldi's grandson, Pietro, a reserve driver with Haas. And you know what? It would be great to see a Brazilian driver return to the Formula One grid. I'm sure Brazil would also agree. These kinds of battles are one of the greatest parts of Formula One's 70 year run. Even if Hamilton wins it all again this year, which he probably will, there's always next year. And there's always an international lineup of potential future heroes. We just need to hurry up and get an American on the grid. 
So when Hamilton retires, Mercedes, call me. I've got a 2100 I rating. That's actually pretty bad. Thank you for watching Wheelhouse. I love, love, love doing F1 stuff on here. So if you want to see more, let me know in the comments. We got a, we got a spicy one coming up for you. I think you'll like it. Follow Donut Media on all social media, at Donut Media. Help us get to a million on Instagram if you'd like. If you're a, a super freak donut fan, check out our membership program by hitting that join button down below. You get behind the scenes videos, you get access to our Discord, all this other cool stuff that is exclusive to our membership program. Check that out if you'd like. Follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. I post photos with my old Sony camera. Um, thanks for watching. Be kind. See you next time.